absolutely correct on a number of points, and, and he mentioned that he came uh, to this chamber for this discussion just as the previous group was wrapping up. I had been here a little bit longer and got to hear some of what they had to say, Mr. Murphy. And, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Murphy mentioned that we have a Republican Party that is joining the debate and, and having the discussion. I, I didn't hear a whole lot of, of joining the debate going on. I heard a lot of, as the gentleman from Connecticut said, revisionist history. And one of the items of revisionist history that I'm most intrigued by that you hear, not just during these special orders debates, but from talk show hosts around the country and others, is the revisionist history that Franklin Roosevelt had nothing to do with the recovery that took place after the Great Depression. And I, I don't recall learning that in school when I was growing up. I, I don't recall uh, that, that talking point being a part of the discussion. But now we're hearing a lot about, well, the New Deal really didn't work and, and, and nothing that was accomplished by that administration solved any of the issues that they inherited during the Great Depression. And, and I think about that when I hear some of the discussion that our colleagues on the other side bring to these special orders. And many of them have become friends and, and colleagues and, and people that, that I admire. But the discussion that I hear, I, I wouldn't consider that to be a debate. I don't think that we're hearing good faith efforts to reach compromise and to work together. I think what we're seeing is a lot of finger pointing. I think we're seeing a lot of, a lot of blame being cast around and a lot of passing the buck. Because as Mr. Murphy said, we have not yet heard anyone own up for the fact that this nation is in the economic crisis that it is in today because of the policies of the very recent past. And we can point fingers and we can cast blame, and that's not what this is about. That's not what we're doing today. But it is instructive to think about how we got to where we are. And when you hear prescriptions being put forward for getting us out of this incredibly deep ditch that we find ourselves in, the people who were bringing forward these prescriptions have a record. They have a record of success or not. So I think the reason it's instructive to look at the decisions that were made in this Congress that led us to where we are today, when you hear people stand on the floor and say, here's my point of view, this is where I'm coming from, this is the way I think we can get ourselves out of this economic situation, let's take a walk down memory lane. Let's think about, well, what, where, what is that person's track record in voting for economic plans? And I do want to remind Mr. Murphy and, and Madam Speaker that we have a country now, eight straight budget deficits. These deficits are now forecast as far as the eye can see. We all know that. And we're going to talk about the economic recovery plan tonight. And we're going to talk about the details of what was in that plan and what was not in that plan equally important because I heard a lot of discussion about things that weren't even related to what was in the economic recovery plan. We'll, we'll have that discussion in a moment. But what's important to think about when you consider what individuals have credibility and what groups have credibility when talking about the budget deficit and which do not. It has to do with the fact that these eight straight budget deficits that we've had followed four consecutive budget surpluses that President Bush inherited. And one of the things about the economic situation that we find ourselves in is when we get out of this, and we will as a nation get ourselves out of this, as the President said last night, when we get out of this, we're going to be able to step back and look at the fiscal policies that worked and didn't and looked at the people who were in power that made those decisions that led to success and lack of success on the economy because it's a pretty clear discussion that you have when you say here's the economy that President Clinton had, a very slow economy to put it uh, kindly. He had an enormous budget deficit. The largest budget deficit ever recorded was under President Bush's father up to that time. President Clinton inherited that situation. When President Clinton left office, the four straight budget surpluses that I was just discussing, and those surpluses were forecast as far as the eye can see. The 10-year budget projection, as we've talked about many times, Mr. Murphy, was $5.6 trillion over 10 years. That was in surplus. If we had just 
kept in place the fiscal policies that we had at that time when President Bush put his hand on the oath of office, Bush 43, if we had just kept in place those fiscal policies, we could have nearly paid down the entire national debt as it existed to that time, now eight years later. But of course, we didn't keep those fiscal policies in place. We went in a completely different direction, which is the way it works. When one party controls the White House, they implement certain policies. When one party controls Congress, they implement certain policies. When the same party controls both the White House and Congress at the same time, as happened during the first six years of President Bush's term, they chose to take the economy in a completely different direction, and boy, did they ever. The economy went in a completely different direction than those four straight budget surpluses and one of the fastest periods of expansion and growth in, in economic history in America. So now we find ourselves with a new administration and yes, that administration has a, a uh, Congress that is of the same party affiliation, and we will see how that plays out. But where I'm going with this, Mr. Murphy, is the policy discussions in the future, you'll be able to see very clearly what happened during the Clinton administration with the economy, what happened during the Bush administration, where did they begin, what did they leave their successor, and of course, history has yet to be written about where President Obama leaves the economy. But I think it's safe to say it couldn't possibly be worse than what he inherited. Well, gentlemen, you know, it's, and you have to look at all of the different ways that we got here and all of the ways in which we can start to repair this. And I, I just think of one right now. Um, you talked about uh, what would have happened if we just continued the policies of the Clinton administration. Obviously, one of the things that uh, changed the financial dynamic in this country was the fact that we decided to go wage a uh, $700 billion war. Uh, and uh, if that wasn't bad enough, we did it all off budget. And that's one of the great untold stories of the Bush administration. No matter what you think about the war in Iraq,